Hello all, Scott Grove here. Um, doing a little more in the traditional country. Um, this is strictly uh, rhythm guitar and some of the best stuff, um, most legendary kind of rhythm that was ever put together. Um, this was done back, this here is the infamous um, just chugging along sound that made Johnny Cash fa you know, famous. Um, Johnny Cash and the Tennessee 2. Okay, we had, um, it was just this train beat that just uh, didn't exist before. Okay, there was no drummer in the band. Okay, it's just Johnny Cash and the Tennessee 2. You had um, uh, Marshall Grant on bass guitar, stand up bass. Okay, so he would be sitting here just slapping away and it would just take care, just like the um, Bluegrass Boys would, but this guy had a little bit of that what would soon be rockabilly uh, going on behind him. And then the drummers would start copying that. So, um, anyway, so Marshall had this style of bouncing off of his strings. Okay, so you get that kind of a sound. So he hit it, boom, click, click, boom, click, boom, click, click, boom, click, click, boom, click, click. And these just that was just the sound of his uh, hands and fingers bouncing off the body, the neck, everything on that bass guitar. And of course, you had the infamous uh, Luther Perkins on guitar that would sit there and just do the same thing as the. Uh, Just nice and simple, just doubling up the bass line, but doing it kind of muted so that it wasn't ringing out going. Okay, that was Cash's part. Okay, um, Cash would often not play his guitar other than the clicks. Okay, you see him down there playing the guitar and it was never plugged in. He would get that bounce going too. And then every now and then you'd come up towards the mic, you know. And... But um, the mics were ultra sensitive back then. Big old ribbon mics, and they could pick up everything. They weren't the major unidirectional mics that we use today, you know, like the 57s and 58s. Um, so um, everything was just raw as it could be, and that's what gave it that sound. So we're, I'm going to teach you how to play that kind of rhythm guitar to where all three styles are incorporated so you get the bass part the luther's part uh, cash's part and you put it all together so you get the common So I'll show you how to do all that. Uh, quick story. Um, I'll get this kind of away from my face and down here towards where we're going to start doing the lessons. But when um, we would hire different, yeah, I'm wearing Jimi Hendrix while I'm teaching Johnny Cash. It's all music. There's two kinds of music: good music, bad music. Okay. Um, whenever we would hire drummers or audition drummers, I should say, uh, we never bothered to bring a drum kit. Okay, there was just no need for it. We could um, audition everybody and only call back two or three drummers out of maybe a hundred that would come through. Most of them were people that looked like me could come in and they thought a country gig would just be easy. They would get some money quick, do one tour and they'd be gone and blah, blah, blah. But they never made it on the bus. Why? Because we would simply, don't laugh, but say just come in and they're like, where's the drum kit? Like, no drum kit. Um, just on your lap, on uh, the table, whatever, just do some stroke rolls. That's right, stroke rolls. And if they said, watch that, then we booted them out. Away they went. <laughs> uh, 
okay um, that's just the way it is you have to know the basics and most rock players can't play it and that is the train beat okay so when they finally added a drummer in uh, with the Tennessee 2 of course it became the Tennessee 3 and of course the stroke roll was the king man just a bass drum snare drum and a hi-hat just boop. And that was all that was required of him, just no fills, so there was no toms, no cymbals needed other than that hi-hat. Just that bass drum, boom, 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 on every single song that created that legendary sound. Okay, so there's your history lesson there. Okay, so what we're going to do, of course, when you do Johnny Cash, everybody thinks of the key of E for some reason even though hardly any of his songs were in the key of E. Folsom Prison Blues, every band in the world does it in the key of E. But it wasn't done there. <laughs> okay, so everybody thinks that's just where it's at, but that's just where all the bar bands play it. But today, just for uh, demonstration purposes, um, we'll go ahead and do the E, A, and B7 thing. Okay, using the old ovation today. Uh, nothing but one simple volume knob back then. Uh, back in the 70s when this puppy was made, um, it's still holding up good. So, anyway, uh, again, three chords, just E. That's going to be for you to tune up with me. Okay, most of you should have an electronic tuner. I'm not going to do each string, you'll be able to tell if your guitar is in tune with me. If not, match up one string, and then tune your guitar. Okay, okay, now that you're there, <laughs> okay, the other chords of course are just going to be the A and B7. If you all don't know the B7, it's one of the weird chords, but most of you should know it if you're getting into the country thing, but if you're just getting into it, you may not know it. Okay, so what it is, is every other string on the second fret. Okay, so you're starting on the E string, pinky, second fret, skip a string, go to the uh, ring finger, second fret on the G string, skip another string, your middle finger on the second fret of the A string, and to tie it all together, we have your first finger that's going to go on the first fret, right there in your D string. So you play everything from the A string on down. Any of that little stuff you want to do, pinky, up one fret, then pull it off, then back to E. Okay, a um, couple little things that I'm going to have to teach you too before we get into the rhythm are just the simple walk-ups, the bass line walk-ups, which Luther Perkins would also do on his guitar. Everybody would do it all at the same time except for John. John just boom. But it was all about tack boom, tack a boom, tack a boom, tack a boom. Everybody was about that. Okay, that's what we're here to get is the hypnotic train sound. Okay, so the walk ups are going to be from E. You know all these, the typical cash things. Okay, so this is just open on the low E, second fret, fourth fret, then the A chord. And backwards from E, just do it, play it backwards. Back down to, from A, I'm sorry. Back down to E, down to four, two, and open to E. Now when we got to go to the B, up to the B7, we're going to go to the 4 on the low E string, open A, then 1st fret, then 
we go to the B7 chord. So that's bringing it up for open on the A string, first fret. Then when you hit the second fret, Now when you're coming backward from the B back down to the E, you have to go from B, so your second fret of your A string, open, and then just like your backward A thing. So four, two, open on your low E. <laughs> okay, so those are gonna be your walks. Okay, forward and backward. Um, you can do your... All I'm doing there when I'm in B7 is grabbing the first finger up here and doing what's called a hammer-on. You pluck it once and then you hammer your finger on there. You only pick it one time though. So you just pull that one finger out of position just enough to go So that is basically that if it goes by too fast for you again that is why your uh, pause button is here okay so those are all the walks so we have all the technical stuff as far as the actual noting and the chords um, laid out for you so I can say just do a walk up or a walk down walk up sounds like it's going up because it is and if it's a walk down from B to E Okay, that one there was open, okay, and hammering on to the second fret of the A string, and then hitting it twice. And the first time being hit is actually the hammer on, then hit it again, then open, then walk down. Okay, you'll hear that one a lot. that on Tennessee flat top box by Roseanne Cash a whole bunch of stuff okay all that kind of fun stuff okay let's get our train beat going okay this is where we have to pay attention okay so let's just go to regular E Now this was the big thing when I was um, rehearsing um, first time. I, you know, it's an old story, but at first, you know, I got to play with Mark Cash, who is Tommy Cash's son. Tommy Cash is Johnny Cash's brother. So anyway, Mark Cash joined our band and started doing some lead singing, and then we got to play with Dad, Tommy Cash, and you get to play with the rest of the family as you go. Um, during rehearsals, um, the big thing was to quit playing what every bar band does okay I'm going to show you the other way too because every we all think it's cool but the traditional way is this okay so okay now us guys the young hot doggers were coming along it'd be like I tell you what, they never hated anything more than everybody coming in with that part that everybody does, or the they're like, nope, simple it up, boy. <laughs> they wanted solid and just like a freaking locomotive, strong, nothing missing. Um, you can tell it's like an engine, you know. Um, you can tell when you know something's skipping in there, something's missing. You just want. You don't want. Or cash didn't want that. Any of them. You know, that's the cash sound. You don't mess with that sound, and they let you know it. And they'll let you know that there's 300 other guys just waiting in line, waiting to play for them. You know. Um, <laughs> it's just the way it is. 
you know, my way or the highway as far as, you know, that stuff goes because it's a method that works. Okay, enough of the history. Um, okay, so let's just get in there. It is simply the low E string. Okay, then it's just a mute with your hand. I usually do it with my pinky. Down up by putting the pinky down here around the third fret, but don't push down. Okay. Okay, and then what all you're doing is hitting the second fret of what's already there of your E chord. So your B note, so your low E string, click, click, then the B note or second fret on the A string, then the same click, then the E again. Okay, now the thing is to develop a bounce here. If your hand isn't doing that, you're not doing your job. Okay, it's got to actually have a physical bounce, otherwise the feel won't be there. Okay, I'm going to make you watch very closely. Notice the one other thing, uh, which is the reason that Tennessee 3 came along and added the drummer. That's right, bass drum. Uh, we're doing it right here. Okay, that's another reason to bouncing. Because your hand is doing that. Okay, not only the percussive things, but on the clicks here but the percussive here so you're doing kick drum okay so it's so you're doing kick drum snare and hi-hat and bass and rhythm guitar okay all this at once um, and this is because we are trying to do the work of three musicians here okay so as things became more complicated with more people in bands and all of a sudden you know there's you know ten piece bands the sound kind of got messed up you know sometimes less is way more okay so it's just uh, that's part of getting that bounce you'll get that as you go and it's part of the bounce. If you don't have that kick drum going sound, you're not doing it right. So don't intentionally try to put a hole in your guitar, um, but you'll know when you have it right, when you're bouncing right. Because that will be happening. That's when you've got it right. Okay, now the other thing is, is how much rhythm guitar do you actually put in it? other than the clicks and the bass drum and the bass notes. Where's the... Okay, it's wherever you want it. Okay, again, Cash was actually there to play guitar. But the big thing was, is he would bring it down away from the microphone so during the verses, mm -hmm. and every now and then he'd pick it up and mm -hmm. then back down, and then fall right back into that groove. That's what it's all about, kids. Right there. Trust me, I've been there. I've been in these bands before. Um, not the bar bands, but with Cash playing these songs. Okay. So this is how it's done. You can't get a more reliable source. Um, so 
Um, this is how it's done uh, to cover all three parts, and I've shown you how all three parts actually came to be, and uh, four parts once uh, the drummer came in. So your three parts being, um, of course, Marshall Grant there on the bass, just doing making the whole thing happen, with um, then Luther Perkins, who's just um, known for that sound, um, Cash on his. And of course, <laughs> and you know, and then the drummer comes along later and just accentuates everything that basically two guys were doing all by themselves. Nobody could believe in the recording studio that all that sound and just that hypnotic train sound was coming from just a couple guys. Then you add Cash in there on guitar and sing it, and then it's like, holy cow, I don't get it but it works and the world went nuts and a legend is born and uh, never strayed from that um, style it was always there you know the horns came in for when his wife when June you know did um, um, Ring of Fire and she wrote that not John June wrote that one great tune um, anyway so let's do I know we're 20 minutes into this and I love talking to history, especially of something that I know so well. Um, okay, so let's do the just the typical E, B. Okay, I'm name, naming the notes. Now walk up to A. Walk down E. Up to B. Now that's what I'm going to get on. Um, okay, so I'll walk up to the A. So you're in E. Walk up. Okay, it was very prominent the way Luther would do the walk ups. Um, it's kind of like Willie, it's almost um, off beat, but what it's called is an anticipated note, the very first note. Okay, so it's not on the beat. Okay, so you're playing. Okay. Okay. Now that is something you just have to get used to doing. Okay. So you actually wait half a beat longer than you normally would. Okay. Than this. Okay. So you actually. You actually kind of like leave out a note and then start later. You leave out the note that most people would start walking up on. That is the Luther Perkins sound. Okay? And when you're in A. So you could do the same thing. Sometimes he would do it that way. Sometimes he wouldn't. But it was great when he did because it was just, it was humorous because nobody else played like that. Okay? And the other thing, getting up to the B. We're back in E again, getting up, and I'm just going to say B instead of B7, but it's always going to be B7. Uh, if and when Cash ever did play an E, um, you know, it's always B7. Everything, his five chord, if you're familiar with um, any kind of theory, just your one chord, your four chord, and your five chord, his five chords are almost always seventh chords. Okay, so to get from the one chord to the five chord, or from the E to the B. Best way to do that is with your pinky. That's a stretch. Okay. different ways. You can wait in the B. And do it really quick like that. Or you can keep the percussive bounce going and do it at half speed. Okay. That was usually his preference. To not 
rush things to make it all sound rushed. Okay, so just the slower the lick, the better. So keep the bounce. It's all about the bounce. To make that happen, It's just nothing but muting every single thing except for the note that you need. Just so you're just using your left hand to mute everything. Okay, because that's all it's about are those bass notes. Everything else is about the clicks and the you know, that. So everything is more here than it is here okay it's all about um, again uh, Marshall being over there okay of course I'm sitting there but he play it and of course you can't play it on a guitar like this when they had a big old doghouse bass as they would call them a double bass stand up bass whatever you want to call it um, so that was how they would do it, just boom. But that's why it would be played on the right hand. Um, so cool. And that would become just rockabilly later. They all did that uh, to the extreme. <laughs> and then they'd start standing up on the bases and you know, flipping them around. It was all cool. But it started, you know, like I said, with Marshall there on the bass doing that kind of thing. And everybody just went nuts. and. Basically, rock and roll was born out of this kind of stuff. You know, he was doing what the rock players were doing, the rock and roll players. No such thing as rock back then, but um, <laughs> yeah, cool stuff. No denying it. Okay, so let's get to straight to the B7. Okay, now we're going to do the walk down at half speed. I mean, So start at the B and three, two, one. They just jump in here anytime. I'll count the walk down. One, two, three, four. Let's walk back up to the B seven. One, two, three. Develop that bounce. Sure hope you can hear that going. Okay, I'll count you back down to the walk down. One, two, three, four. Do the walk up to the A. One, two, three. Okay, and that's the anticipated run up. One, two, three. Mm -hmm. You always gotta throw that in there. Walk back down. One, two, three. Okay. Uh, there was no slowing the A one down to go back down to the E. Okay. So those are your three ways to get around. Um, it doesn't matter what key you're in. Um, let's do just for fun. It it's the same formula over here. Okay. Uh, quite often, John would do um, Folsom Prison in the key of G. Okay, sometimes he'd do it in F sharp. Sometimes it depend on what his voice was like that day. Okay, so um, instead of like everybody thinks the song is, it's not. Um, put on any recording of John doing. Uh, <laughs> Folsom Prison, see if it's in the key of E. It's never there. Okay, so 
do it in the key of G. Um, <laughs> okay, so, um, which is where it would be. Um, anyway, in the G, you're going to be doing the same walk-ups, same everything, um, but you're going to be doing the G, or the low E string. Okay, you're doing the E string then the D string open. Okay, that's just strictly low E string, A string open, second fret, then third fret to lead you to the C. And you gotta just rock that ring finger back and forth from the A to the C. That one was kind of funny sometimes. Um, um, I don't know why, but in the key of G, it was usually that. Um, and it's different than all the others, but that's just where he played it. Um, that's it. Two, three, four, five. Okay. Or actually two, three, four, and then go to a D chord. Okay, so you're doing G. backwards D string then three two open then your G note again so those are your walk ups and walk downs but going up to the uh, D was kind of just different one two three and always walk down slow coming back down from the D Dum, boom, 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 boom. Now, cool thing about in the key of D or key of G, you didn't have the luxury that we all like to play when we're in E, doing like Folsom, like all the bar bands do. They <laughs> he hated that, but that is if you want it. Just a hammer on open A and just slap it on there to the second fret. Okay, and then really get him a good slap. I'm letting you have it with both barrels now, okay? Full volume for the full cash effect. 34 minutes into it, and you're going to finally get to hear it. I'm back to E. Fade out, um, just like the records. <laughs> okay, just w walking away from the mics, and I'd fade it out. Just lean the bass away from the mic. John would step back, and Luther would just play softer. Okay, so that is the first demonstration. Yeah, 34 minutes into it, of um, the real cash sound. So hope you enjoyed that. That is as simple as it gets. Just wanted to do more of the basic country stuff and show you the roots of how this stuff goes. And again, um, when you break into a chorus of a song, um, 
whether it be that. Um, um, you can sure, of course, you know, break into some actual rhythm. That, my friends, is called dynamics. Okay, so when you go to a chorus of a song, sure, open up, let the uh, rest of the strings ring, but on the um, verses, um, it is textbook cash to go strictly rhythm and bass notes. Rhythm meaning boom, chicka boom. That's what it was called. Boom, chicka 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 boom. Stroke rolls. Couldn't play those, you were fired immediately. It's like leave the rehearsal studio. No drums allowed until you can play that. If you can't play that, you're a loser. So that is it. Um, no more to add to it. So that is the real cash way. Um, again, all three parts played together. The bass part, the um, Luther's part on uh, his Telecaster and uh, John's part uh, so that's Johnny and the Tennessee 2 and then we're trying to kind of make up with the uh, and then the drummer came in and didn't play that hard just enough to accent that boom chicka boom chicka boom and throw some brushes on there okay it wasn't sticks most of the time or there would be the wooden bundles uh, back then to play on but it was never sticks I mean that just took away you didn't need that crack of the snare you needed so it's like you know brushes of some sort so hope you enjoyed the little uh, Johnny Cash um, boom chicka boom chicka boom chicka boom lesson and um, I'll have plenty more of the easy traditional country style of um, playing on electric and acoustic and bass and other things because there's no denying what it is that I like and that's this kind of stuff. Um, there are plenty of other people teaching everything else and this is where my heart is so this is um, what I'm going to teach you the best is um, if your heart's not in it you know I can, I can sit here and fake things all day long and you know get by and everybody thinks it's great just because it's better than what they're doing at the moment but you can always tell when somebody's not into what they're doing but I am 100% vested into classic country it's what I love it's what I do best and it's what I know um, without any shadow of a doubt so for those of you who are just loving the old country you miss it you miss the old country stuff and yeah, I do for sure um, you get people like Alan Jackson and George Strait and even Josh Turner and so forth like that that are the, you know, those guys, well, at least Jackson and Strait have been around for many moons now. And that's the closest thing we've had to, you know, classic country, but still, uh, they're tossing out, you know, a lot of novelty songs, you know, that's just, so the days of the old country stuff are gone and it's sad, but then again, we always have them on you know recordings and people like me will sing them till the day they die and hopefully generations later we'll find these little tidbits all over whatever site comes after YouTube and hopefully some of these videos will remain in the archives for people to learn to learn to play the good old stuff and find out what the roots are and how they were all tied together and get to listen to my crazy mouth you know god forbid the ge you know future generations have to listen to my um insanity but hey it's possible you know it's uh i think only a new major nuclear war can actually stop the internet you know so 
anyway, so I hope people find these things. It'll be like a time capsule thing, but it's a great, great, great part of our musical history that just should not die, and it doesn't matter what style that you like personally. I think it is good for you to incorporate this into your repertoire um, because, okay, just learn to appreciate music, not just what turns you on. Um, it will all have some kind of an effect on you, even if uh, you stick one little lick in from something country and make it your own, but you take it from here, you take a feeling from here, um, there will always be somebody in your audience that will, um, this will evoke a memory from, and a feeling, I mean this is a definite feeling thing. Nobody else had done it before, and so few have done it since, and nobody did it like Cash. So, um, if you can get the rest of your bandmates to whip out just a couple measures of a good boom chicka boom chicka boom and then right back into whatever style you play it's just a cool place to go for just a second to let people know that you're diverse you're into just music and not just whatever you're into just, just so they know that you <laughs> have some kind of real background Okay, so I'll be quiet at this point. Um, this is my last hair day. I know I keep talking about my hair, but it's all going away at 2 o'clock tomorrow. Um, for anybody who wants to come around, that would be uh, Pacific time. I'll make my hair go away. <laughs> Get it all off my shoulder. <laughs> okay, uh, happy picking, happy thumping, and a boom, chicka, boom, chicka, boom, boom, boom. Bye.